नमस्कार दिस इज अखिलेश भार्गव वेलकम टू टेट बिट्स ऑन बिजनेस एंड फाइनेंस विद मी द केस ऑफ केन यूके इज बैक इन द न्यूज एंड द रेट एट विच अ डिटर्मिन केन इज टेकिंग एक्शन इन इंटरनेशनल कोर्ट्स टू रिकवर द आर्बिट्रेशन अवार्ड ऑफ वन पॉइंट सेवन बिलियन डॉलर फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया केन विल कंटिन्यू टू बी इन द न्यूज फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम केन विल कंटिन्यू टू ऑक्यूपाई हेडलाइंस टिल आई दर इट रिकवर्स इट्स मनी फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट or the government wins its appeal against the arbitration order and gets it cancelled or if there is an amicable and acceptable settlement of the dispute between the two parties till then it will be in the news it all began with the income tax department claiming retrospective tax of 10560 crores from the scottish oil company in 2015 towards overseas share transfers which had taken place as part of an internal reorganization of kane that took place in 2006 in the uk the department passed an order in march 2015 saying that kane uk had earned capital gains of 24503 crores on such overseas transaction and that it must pay tax of 10560 crores on it in india the department subsequently levied penalty on kane uk and thus the disputed demand ballooned to over 22000 crore rupees against which the income tax department coercively subsequently recovered 7600 crores by seizing the shares and the dividend that belonged to kn uk this tax and penalty was levied despite the then finance minister late shri arun jetli admitting the untenability of such retrospective taxes which the bjp itself had termed as terror tax when it was in the opposition but when it came to power it was yet another story such retrospective tax demands had been raised by the department in a number of other cases also not expecting any relief from courts in india some of the agree parties decided to contest them in courts abroad kane also did that pursuing arbitration of the case claiming that such taxes violate the bilateral investment treaty between the uk and india the first one to get a favorable order was vodafone where the arbitration panel held that the tax levied on vodafone by the government was not legitimate in response to that order in the case of vodafone the government promptly said that it would go in appeal challenging the award which it did last year the hearing is yet to come The other case where the award went against the government was that of Cain UK in a unanimous award the arbitration tribunal held that the disputed tax levied on Cain was in violation of the guarantee of fair and equitable treatment and thus violated the India UK bilateral investment treaty yet another case where an arbitration award went against the government was that of Devas Multimedia where it was held that the government earned in cancelling its 1.3 billion dollars satellite lease agreement while vodafone did not pursue course of recovery of the arbitration award from the government perhaps mindful of its sizable investments and business interests in india kn uk however decided to do that after all it had 1.7 billion dollars at stake after the arbitration award was passed in december 2020 Kane promptly demanded 1.7 billion dollars from the government of India. Its CEO visited India in February 21 to meet the finance minister and resolve the issue, but the FM at that time had no time to meet him. Her then deputy is the finance secretary Shri Ajay Bhushan Pandey and the CBDT chairman Shri P C Modi met the Kane CEO and offered to settle the matter. under the vivad se vishwas scheme which required kane to accept and pay the disputed demand which was of course not acceptable to it in the meanwhile the government said that the kane arbitration award was not legal and that it will challenge it in appeal which it did in march 2021 its first hearing is scheduled to take place on 24th september 2021 in response to this kane further hardened its stand and said that it must recover the sum of 1.7 billion dollars to protect the interests of its shareholders kane said that since india too is a signatory to the un convention it has a right to attach and sell overseas assets of the government 
in order to recover its dues. It also said that it remains open to a settlement of the case with the government on amicable and acceptable terms which have yet to be decided. Kane then said that it has identified government assets of $70 billion worldwide and that it has filed recovery petitions in the UK, USA, UAE, France, Netherlands, Cayman Islands, Japan, Singapore, Mauritius and Quebec seeking seizure and sale of the government assets in order to recover its dues. It pushed the recovery bar even further by filing an application in a New York court seeking attachment of the airplanes and assets of Air India, arguing that there is no difference between the government and Air India, saying that Air India after all is an alter ego of the government of India. At that time, the government also warned the public sector banks to mine their dollar balances abroad, fearing their sudden seizure by any recovery order that might be obtained by Kane UK. The latest news is that a tribunal in France has ordered the seizure of 20 properties of the government of India in France worth about 20 million euro. These are mostly residential flats situated in central Paris and the India house where Indian students reside in France. The attachment of these properties does not mean that the government staff living there will be evicted and that the flats will be sold. That is yet another subsequent procedure which would follow such attachment of assets and Kane is expected to conduct that also. But with this attachment of property in favour of Kane, the government certainly cannot sell them. Such orders being a recovery administrative mechanism, they were passed ex parte without any hearing notice to the government of India from the French tribunal. Kane said that this order is a necessary preparatory step to take the ownership of these government properties and sell them later. But it also said that it prefers an agreed amicable settlement of the case and that it has reached out to the government of India seeking a meeting with the finance minister which has not been granted so far. The government which has been caught napping with its perfunctory and formal approach so far said that it has received no notice or communication or order from the French tribunal but said that it will challenge the same as and when it receives it. The government emphasized and said that it was willing to settle the case under the Indian legal framework only and not under any international arbitration award that Kane has got. The larger picture and the question that emerged from this entire episode are many. The first one, with its success in France, Kane will obtain similar orders from other nations to remain in hot pursuit of its recovery. After all, there are 160 nations who are signatories to the UN Convention and such recovery can be pursued in any of those 160 nations and Kane might do that. The second issue, such orders are certainly humiliating and only further tarnish India's not so good image as a fair and attractive investment destination. The third point, in case Kane chooses to transfer its rights under this award to a more resourceful and bigger entity, then the government would be cornered in many other courts abroad and that likelihood cannot be ruled out. The fourth point, the government is certainly taking the matter frivolously, casually and lightly, not just in the way it is fighting these cases, but also in its approach of presuming that Kane will not take on the might of the government of India, which it already is doing. The next point, ironically, while on the one hand, the government puts in efforts to make India an attractive investment destination and claims a substantial improvement in its ease of doing business, on the other hand, it fritters away these improvements by levying taxes like this, losing cases and generating bad press and headlines against it worldwide. Perhaps due to arrogance, the government is even oblivious of the huge hit to government's reputation, to India's reputation that occurs because of these kind of orders and developments. The sixth one, if the government truly wants India to be a sought after investment destination, then it needs to be fair law abiding and honor its own laws, treaties and court orders and not violate them at will. These cases have arisen due to the government's own unwillingness to abide by orders of Indian courts. The NDA itself had denounced retrospective tax and it now pursues these cases in a very dishonorable manner. The next one, 
The case could have been settled under the mutual agreement mechanism between the UK and India, but it has not been done so so far. Such orders will encourage others to pursue similar claims and actions against the government of India, which is certainly not in the interest of India. And finally, in its single-minded pursuit of tax, the government is clearly sacrificing long-term benefits for short-term gains by levying these kind of taxes, losing these kind of arbitrations and tarnishing India's image. The fact of the matter is that in case we want to claim that India is an attractive and fair investment destination, then it is the government first which will have to honor the law of the land, which will have to abide by tax and investment treaties, the bilateral ones that it enters into with other countries, and it will certainly have to accept orders of courts which are passed in India. It is because this is not done that we have episodes like Kane UK, which are highly avoidable. This is Akhilesh Bhargav signing off till we meet again. Namaskar. Now be the first to know about the latest updates on our new news app. Go on your Android or iOS, search for HW News Network. Download our app, choose the language you prefer to get updates in and be up to date with the latest news. If you like this video, please share it and we would love to hear your comments in the comments section down here. Also, please do like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter to get minute to minute news updates. For more such shows and videos, well, subscribe to our YouTube channel.